Well, today in Halo news, guys, we had a reveal of how much the Halo TV show budget was. An attack defending kind of ship mode coming to Halo Infinite, like a space battle kind of thing. HCS Kansas City tickets are selling out fast. And also some campaign DLC, possibly this year? Well, according to a LinkedIn profile, highly likely. If you want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again giving you another Halo news and informational video. If you like these kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button. Let me know you want to see some more content like this. It also greatly helps out the video and channel get a better place within the all famous YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay updated with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. Now this Variety article here talks about the Halo TV show and its budget and how many rewrites the show went through. If you guys don't know, this show has basically been in development since 2013. Now it is kind of like hell to just to put together a show. It's really collaborative, hard to put that together. Uh, but this one kind of puts into a little bit of light about how much it actually costs and saying it costs more than $90 million to put this show together. It's probably why it got approved for a second season, let's be real. You know, you put that much money into something, you at least want to get some content out of it, right? As well as 265 script drafts later, Halo is finally a TV show. This article essentially goes over the winding history of bringing Halo to live action, which started back, they said 17 years ago, which makes sense because if you guys don't remember, there was a Halo movie planned to be made with Peter Jackson as the director of that movie, but things just kind of fell apart and then they later got scrapped to make District 9, which I've heard it's a great movie, I just haven't seen it. And then he said six years of development with Amblin Television in 2010s, which is kind of when the show was announced back in 2013, things just kind of happened. And then with the pandemic and then finally cutting it down to nine episodes for the first season, took nearly two years just to put the show together. Stephen Kane, who is the showrunner for the first season of Halo's TV show, says he estimates they wrote up to upwards of 265 drafts for the first nine episodes. Now that sounds, oh my God, terrible. Now I don't really have a form of context when it comes to how many drafts it takes to write up a show, though I do know that it takes a lot of drafting. And I mean, a lot of drafting because you have so many people all in a room together having their own opinions about how to write a show together it can be quite mentally draining i think is probably the best word to put it of course when you take into consideration the amount of time it took them to put this show together yeah probably that many scripts would come together now doesn't a new script count as like a completely new rewrite or some minor changes count as a new script the fact that he points it out makes me think that it's probably a higher amount than usual though and we will be covering the halo tv show that launches on march 24th here on the channel guys i'll give you my reviews and thoughts of the season so far the reviews are coming in that are really about like 60 percent on rotten tomatoes but i've seen as high as 8 out of 10 on imdb so i think it's gonna be pretty good and i'll definitely cover it here on the channel and we had another massive gameplay get new game mode leak on top of the one that we covered previously on the channel if you guys don't know about that one it's gonna be like a warzone battle royale kind of mix it looks like i covered it here on the channel yesterday Today, we have a whole nother new mode that got leaked out. This looks to be kind of like a space battle kind of mode with like a attack defend kind of bomb experience. Now I won't be able to show this leak because I feel like this one might be kind of time sensitive and obviously I don't want to risk my channel. But I'll share with you all the interesting information from this leak. Like I said, it's gonna be like an attack defense, like warship kind of defend mode, which seems to be maybe like a bomb is involved with it as well. Uh, one thing says attack, destroy weak points on any means necessary and defense protect your weak points in your ship defense intercept enemy bomb assaults on your ship and then also detonate a bomb at the site of the enemy's ship so this sounds like maybe like some form of space battles that we could have within halo infinite this does sound kind of crazy because we've never really experienced any kind of like space battles like at all the only time we really had that was in halo reach on that one campaign mission that long night of solace though it would be pretty amazing if they could pull that off in a multiplayer match now that would be kind of crazy. Now reading the leaks kind of reminds me of this one game mode from Battlefield 4, which is Carrier Assault. Basically the idea is it kind of mixes Conquest and Rush together. The way to do for the game mode is capture three objective points. Once all those points are captured, then the enemy's base is opened up for you to assault their carrier, which ends up being like a Rush game mode on top of the carrier. And once you destroy that, then you win the game. And this game mode was a ton of fun to play. I believe it was a playoff of like the Battlefield 14 4, 44 whatever like some of the, the futuristic version of it uh, they brought it back with battlefield 4 and i play this game mode a lot guys and it is 
a ton of fun. It just adds so many different types of game modes and different types of tactics and experiences all within one mode. And if you can pull this off, it would be kind of insane, but like, you know, but instead of having it like gunfights, you have space battles, but maybe like you have your gunfights inside the ship or something like that. That would be pretty crazy. Especially once you got inside the ship, guys, like that's when the battles really start happening because it takes like the wide open X aspect of the gameplay and puts it down to like these narrow hallways with crunched in all these different people all in the same spot. It's kind of crazy, but really fun at the same time. If you guys haven't tried it out, you definitely want to give it a go, especially since Battlefield 4, I think it's actually haven't been a resurgence since 2042 is kind of being a bit of a letdown. Now, if you're considering about going to Kansas City event, guys, here at the end of April, you definitely need to start making up your mind because it looks like right here that 65% of spectator tickets have already sold out. VIP tickets already sold out like within the first day. It's still kind of crazy to think that this many people are still that much interested in watching some Halo and taking part of it. I'm actually going to go to the Kansas City event. I got my ticket, got my flight, got my hotel. We're all ready to go. So if you're going to be at Kansas City, guys, feel free to stop by and say hi. Or maybe make a blog out of it or something. It'd be kind of fun. The head of HCS, Tashi, also talks about saying, like, get, make sure to get your tickets because they're going quickly. And he says that Kansas City looking like it's going to be even bigger and better than Raleigh, which I'm like, that's some high hopes right there, which I'm like, you know, Raleigh was pretty dang popping right there when it comes to Halo's interest. I mean, uh, we saw like a huge amount of people watching on Twitch. I think Halo peaked at like number four on Twitch or something like that for most viewed game on the platform, which is kind of crazy. And I don't expect the uh, viewership to be as much as Raleigh. I think it's pretty tough to beat that because the game just came out and people were just enjoying the game for what it was. So if you see anybody sharing tweets or information but look how much lower the viewer count is compared to raleigh i mean like well that was going to happen no matter what even if halo infinite was in a perfect state right now i think the viewership would still be lower just because it had the aspect of being brand new to play it was, i think the game was only out for like a week until like the raleigh event happened but like i said i'll be there guys i might i might even make a blog out of it if you guys are interested in the blog let me know in the comment section down below and our favorite leaky boys over at halo hub shared this leak i guess you want to call it a linkedin profile described in their experience at Halo and said this about some interesting things, saying that they directed 2022 campaign efforts for Halo Infinite in partnership with design and production. Continue on saying drove production efforts for campaign 2022 initiatives from start to finish. Keyword on the finish right there. And some other people who have shared insight upon this kind of bit of information have said that maybe it might be more tied to the seasonal campaign stuff. If you guys don't know that was season two, it looks like we might have some kind of form of extended campaign kind of stuff not necessarily like a full like you're playing the campaign but at least extending the story of the campaign through the multiplayer seasons something more tied to the academy similar like we had that kind of mission if you want to call it that when it came to season one and experiencing like the tutorial mission and stuff like that so i mean you might have something else being brought into season two which would be kind of crazy it's just gonna be very interesting to see how 343 continues telling story elements of halo infinite as a live service game i would assume that we would have continuous story elements happening throughout the game. I mean, even looking at the Halo Waypoint website, talking about Halo Infinite, you see right here, it says campaigns with an S right here. So either 343 can't spell properly or they're actually doing some campaign DLC. I'm expecting the latter to happen where we would actually get some DLC. It just depends what that cadence is going to be like. That's where like that roadmap we've been wanting for four months now at this point. <laughs> will actually let us know like what to expect for the rest of the year. I'm not expecting campaign DLC. I, I would assume that if you're gonna do campaign DLC, you'd probably do like a full on new campaign, which takes at least two years in development, if not three. But again, it depends. Do you wanna do more bite-sized story releases? Maybe like once a year, you release like a five hour long campaign, or do you wait two years and release a full-fledged one that could take about 10 to 20 hours? We'll see what happens. But of course, it's a developing story. That's what it all is. I'll make sure to let you guys all know on this channel. But if you're new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, make sure you tap subscribe and check out these videos right here if you missed any content from me recently. And thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.